What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Bad Podcast, and we are live again. You get us twice in one week, live again, in our E2M private page, as well as the Eager to Run uh, Club. Uh, if you're not a part of Eager to Run Club, what are you doing? If you hadn't joined E2M, uh, signups are in uh, a couple of days, those that are watching on YouTube. And if you're in Eager to Run, and if you're in the uh, E2M page, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, Brad, with all of that out of the way, brother, what are we talking about today? <laughs> we're we're going to bring back the conversation about the journey. So I have a quote here. It has been a long journey, but if you dream and you have ambition and want to work hard, then you can achieve. All right, man. Let's, let's achieve it. Hey, good job, guys. Good job. Mental battles. Mental battles. what it look like what it be like what it do back again for another bad podcast man this time we got four screens up man not just two brad man we got two special guests man and we're gonna jump right in uh while we are getting into the introductions make sure you tag somebody if you're watching this live so they can go back and watch the replay or they can join in uh, but make sure you tag some folks. So, Brad, man, who who we got going on? What we got going on today? Some good friends from the the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, today, we're going to talk about the journey. We're going to talk about the comeback story. And uh, so I'm going to pass it off to my friend, Cherise. She was the lone wolf last year, our lone supporter for the Atlanta 5K. Um, and so, so Cherise, I want you to take it away and, and uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. All right, sounds good. Hello out there to, to the world of E2M world. Um, so I am Sharice Challenger. I'm an attorney. Uh, I have my own law firm, which is Challenger Law Group. We specialize in criminal defense and personal injury here in Metro Atlanta and then or Metro Atlanta and then throughout Georgia for personal injury, as well as Texas for personal injury as well. I have been part of E2M for two years now my anniversary thank you my e2m anniversary is coming up in may on may 4th which is actually my birthday month so i'm looking forward to that and e2m has been amazing for me um i started off at a size 14 and now i'm a size 8. so it's been an awesome journey and we'll talk a little bit about how that came about for me but that's me that's great all right, who's this other guy on the screen? <laughs> well, <laughs> let him introduce himself. <laughs> Hello, I'm Cossum Challenger, um, the husband of Sharice Challenger. Um, I shared uh, the journey with her, um, E2M. Um, I think it's been awesome, uh, motivating her, keeping her accountable. And I just think that uh, it's a great thing. Great, got a great thing going. I love it. You know, when you when you can uh, be surrounded by people that are going to hold you accountable and, and kind of drive you, um, it makes the journey a whole lot easier. And today, I want to talk about that comeback story between uh, the two of you. And Sharice, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you a little bit first. Um, you know how how did you how did you first and foremost find E two M? And um, we'll start there. How did yeah. you find us? Sure. So let me go back. Um, I first became active with the with working out back in 2006. And the reason why I can pinpoint that is because I was in law school and I was coming up on my 10 year high school reunion and I had changed a lot. And I was, I didn't want to be one of those people to be like, dang, what happened with her? So <laughs> I said, okay, let me, let me go on that journey. And so I did like, you know, a weight loss program that was very expensive, um, thousands of dollars to lose the weight. And I started that, but then it wasn't sustainable for me. So I've always kept with the workouts. So fast forward, my husband and I, we have uh, two babies together, a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And then I have a bonus child. Uh, she's in college. And so after I had the pregnancies, had the babies, um, I really wanted to get on my journey of really just trying to get the weight off once and for all. I kept plateauing, like going up and down, up and down, trying to figure out being like a lot of people trying every particular diet that's on the market. And it just, you know, it's fine when you're on it, but when you get off of it, it's just not sustainable. 
So in 2022, I was still working out like I always do, um, which is at least four to five times a week at that time. Now I'm up to six times a week. And one of my friends um, reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and she said, hey, girl, um, you know, do you, have you heard of E2M? And her name is Tamika. Shout out to her. Um, she's a member now as well for two, over two years. And so I said, no, what's that? She was like, you know what? I've been on it for like a month now. Let me fi let me finish it and then I'll come back and tell you about it. So I was like, OK, I didn't think anything of it. And I think and we laugh about this. So I can tell this story. I think lightweight. She was saying, girl, I see you working out, but I don't see any changes. So <laughs> you, you may want to try something else. And so uh, and, and also at that time, I had prayed to God and I said, you know what, God? I got the workouts. The workouts are good, but I need help with my diet. I know it's the it's, it's what I'm eating. And I said, Lord, if you can just help me with that, help me deal with that, then, you know, I know I'll be in a better position for myself, for my family, take care of my kids. And so then once she brought it back to me after she did an amazing job on her uh, first round, she came back to me. And then I was like, what? And I said, OK, I'm in. And the rest is history. That is dope. I love that. <laughs> So, so uh, most of the time, you know, the way it works is, you know, most of the time the, the wife will find it and then they got to drag the, the husband along. Was that the case for you, brother? Were, were you all in at first or talk, talk about it real quick? Well, I wasn't, um, I, I kind of have a different journey because I, 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 I'm a retired army guy. So working out and uh, eating discipline has always been my, you know, my, my blueprint. Um, I've been working out since I say eighth grade. Eighth grade is when I really started working out and uh, it takes forever for me to gain weight. So I have to, I have to eat, you know, bricks, protein, everything, just to, <laughs> just to hold a couple of pounds. Um, Kind of my my comeback is kind of is was I had a I had a stem cell transplant in 2008, and I and in my journey I I lost uh, I went from 192 pounds to 174 pounds, and gaining you know that really for me that hurts me because all that muscle was just gone, and I'm like good lord this is like weight at 32 years old. Uh, fast forward, I just had a lung transplant on April 21st, and I went from 188 pounds to 160 something pounds. So for me, you know, it was just, you know, trying to gain weight, trying to get healthy, healthier weight, just understanding the science of gaining weight naturally and better than every time before is always my goal. But when I saw ETOM and I saw the running, it motivated me and I said, you know what, that's going to be my goal. You know, and it, to be a runner again, um, to use these brand new lungs was always the goal. But I had a vision when I went to the race. So that's what got me here. I love that, man. Just just so you know, man, when I was in bodybuilding prep, I did the same thing. I went from 190 to 170. I was perfectly <laughs> healthy, but my coach was crazy. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> 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 All right, Brad, go ahead. No, 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 no. Uh, both of you have incredible comeback stories. And um, is, is, is Kasim, is that how you say it? Yes, it's Kasim. Yes. Um, I, I just want to talk about your journey, um, you know, back on that track, back on the asphalt. You know, you, um, you, you know, you lost out of that weight. You know, you lost the ability of your lungs. You lost the ability to, um, you know, exercise, right? And, uh, but you, you never lost faith. You never, you never lost belief. And, uh, you, you know, and I, I think that's the foundation of success is the, is, is your own self belief. So I want to talk about your journey back to a 5k, um, because, uh, yeah, let's, let's hear about it. So, you know, it started back in the hospital or it started pre pre transplant. They wanted me to do a lot of leg workouts because, post transplant, I cannot use my arms to get up out of the bed. Um, literally, um, I had my transplant on the 20th of April and it started on the 20th of April. It finished on the 21st of April. Um, and within 24 hours, they had me walking. 
they had me walking and I will, uh, I will show you pictures later, but you know, I'm, I'm connected to at least five or 10 machines, you know, trying to walk around the floor, but, you know, moving that, that movement and using those lungs was it was just a, it had to happen that quickly and that fast. So that's where the that's where the combat story really begins. Uh, then they give you a then they, once you get out of ICU, which I only was in ICU for about two or three days. They say you have to walk around the floor uh, eighteen laps uh, in th three days consecutively, and uh, I did it, and I was ready to leave out the hospital within two weeks. And they were like, this guy, you know, physical therapy, they didn't want anything to do with me. They were like, you're a little bit too ahead. They had me outside, outside Emory campus walking. They had me walking upstairs and they were like, yeah, this guy is just different. But my will to, my will to succeed, you know, is just, is amazing. Like, I think, thankfully it's partly me and partly you know, just being in the military and not wanting to ever quit, you know, and quitting is just not an option. And, and can I add to that, too? Absolutely. Um, so to complete the, the whole story. So with, with Qasem, you know, he's he's retired army, which he said. So he contract, contracted lung disease when he was in the army. So when he was stationed over in Iraq, he contracted lung disease. He went through this journey for 14 plus years where he had a chronic cough, where he would cough all the time throughout the entire day. And we're talking about every few minutes he's coughing constantly. And so it came to the point where the pulmonologist, his lung, his lung specialist said like, you're not gonna be able to survive with your set of lungs. You need a new set of lungs. And so he's 45. And so less than a year ago, he's celebrating one year anniversary on April 21st. He made the decision to get not one, but two. So a double lung transplant. And so when we, when we went to that race, which is what my firm, Challenger Law Group, sponsored back in December for E2M in Atlanta, he was there with me, supporting me after having surgery five months, ago, five months prior to that, or seven months prior to that, sorry. And he said that at that race, and he told, um, he told Uncle Brad, he told Coach Jeff, as well as he told Brent, that I will be running at the next race. So just to Pull this a full, full circle. E2M, E2M has definitely changed our world, changed our life. But most importantly, to see him, to be able to run his 5K, his first 5K coming up in May after having lung transplant just a year ago is remarkable. All right, so I, I don't have no <laughs> tissue, so and we got to. Yeah. I didn't even add that. We got to change directions, man. Like, I don't have no tissue. I was looking around. I was like, I don't have no tissue. But no, that that that's amazing, man. That I mean, you know, I I ain't even gonna talk because I know where I'm going. Go ahead, Brad. I'm gonna let yeah. you do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 uh, I'm I'm shaking up on this side of the screen as well, and. Um, you know, our, our theme for Atlanta is braver than yesterday, right? It's braver than yesterday. And you talk about bravery to come out and support you at the Atlanta meetup. And, and now full circle, uh, May 11th, we'll be back in a, a, at uh, Bucart Farms in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, just to cut, overcome the trials and tribulations and to see you toe that start line. And, and we will watch you cross that finish line, you know, and you guys, you got you guys are the the support system right to to each other yeah. and yes and, and, and man that's that's the mold is 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 who you surround yourself with Dwayne and I talk about it almost every week your insulation man who you're surrounded by you know in 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 both of you you know it's it's uh it doesn't go without being said that it's it's probably frustrating. There's you know there's ups and downs with surgeries and, and poor health and those kind of things. And and at any time you could have said you know what I'm gonna bail, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here. This is getting getting to be too much. But you never did. You know you supported each other. You stayed by each other's sides. And now here we are, baby, on a podcast talking about health and fitness and five Ks and support. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. So Sharice, I just want to you know get your take on um, you know just uh you know, how you were that beacon of that beacon of hope and, um, you know, how you were that shining diamond and how you led the way to get him to this 5k. Well, I think that, you know, being a, a being his caretaker, I think it starts there. So 
when we were going through the process of having a transplant, I was told that I could not be his primary caretaker because of our small babies. And so his dad and his mom, and we have a great support system, really stepped in to really help him get them through this journey. Now I was there at the hospital every day. He was actually in the hospital for 36 days um, before he was sent home um, to his parents' house because his parents lived near the hospital. So he had to stay there for an additional three weeks before he can come to our house. And so just seeing him with that journey and being that caretaker, um, I also had to understand that being a caretaker for him, I had to make sure I take care of myself. And so even though that life is busy and I thank God for it, because I, I thank God for the opportunity. I, I don't complain about it at all. It is definitely busy, but I thank God for the opportunity. But, you know, running a firm, having two small children at home, having my husband who is on the men, um, as well as, you know, keeping my faith, being active in our church, I still had to make sure that I put my health together, put my health first to make sure that I can be all these things for everyone else. And so for me, I work out every morning um, between six and seven. My husband knows that's my time. And even when he was in the hospital, I still was getting up in the morning to work out at five, five thirty before I get my kids ready for school, get him off, get them off the school. I'm off to the hospital and then my sitter will relieve me um, and come pick the kids up until I come home late that night. And to be able to keep that going, and I think that helped motivate Custom because once he got the, the green light to start working out, we have a home gym, so we have a gym set up in our house so we can do so and not have to worry about the kids and where they're going to go and everything else. Um, that's I start to see him like, okay, I need to I can start working out. And so we're both in there motivating each other. You know, he'll see me run on the treadmill. And he's like, okay, babe, I need to go ahead and get my 5K practice my 5k and I actually show him the program like this is what you can use to start the program and it just started from there and it just took off so he's he's excited I'm excited for him for for this race that's coming up in in now a month I'm excited that, that's amazing mm -hmm. and sometimes uh when you're taking care of others you know kids um yep we, we uh, deprioritize ourselves. And, and that's why a lot of us find ourselves, you know, with a program like E2M. And, um, you know, so it's, it's nice that you guys had that support system and just talking about support. And I want to talk about your business a little bit. How much is, uh, how much is, um, you know, just, uh, you know, prioritizing your fitness, your health and your wellness and your growth, how, how much has that contributed to, um, your business? A, a lot, actually. Um, my, <laughs> My staff know, so it's six of us here in the office, and my staff know that, you know, I'm on this wellness journey, and so we will do things to keep keep that together as a whole. So we do, like, every quarter, we'll do bonding events, and we'll go and do activities where we'll go during the, off, during the, during the work day. I'll shut down the office, and it's paid for my, for my staff, and we'll go, like, last time we went and played manager golf. Another time, we went bowling, and so we'll you know, eat together and then we'll play some games, something, you know, just that's active for us. And then to um, be able to just, you know, come together as, as staff. And I know, you know, we're pretty busy and my staff, they do an amazing job because I'm in court a lot. So they do an amazing job really holding down an office. So it's my way of thanking them um, for doing so. But also I put a uh, walking pad recently, I actually recently bought a walking pad and I put that in our break room. Um, to get me away from the desk because I know I eat a lot. I have a bad habit of eating at my desk a lot. Um, and I was like, you know what? I need to take this time away and refocus and go and walk. And I know I'm not going to go outside because it's just my time. So I was like, why not just do it in my office? We have a TV back there um, for my staff. But but also, we're really big on family. Um, I'm really big on work-life balance. I tell my, my staff who um, half of them have children that, you know, if Schools are closed, which, you know, a lot of times they are closed for various reasons. You can bring your kids up here. Like I allow them to bring their kids up here to be able to do stuff with their kids, you know, be active with your kids. I, I'm asking them to come to the race on May 11th. I'm not requiring it, but I do think they will come. Um, so just being able to walk in that life and they see me doing that. And that's also allowed them to to um, be health, be uh, active themselves and be healthy. And one thing, too, is and I mentioned this before. But my intake specialist, I actually found her through E2M because her mom came up to me at the race back in December 
and said, hey, my daughter is looking for a job. She really wants to go to law school. Can you please, you know, take a look at her resume? And I did. And she's been amazing. So she's been with me now for about four months and amazing job. Not to mention, I've also gained some clients as well from E2M. So that's always a good thing as well. Personal injury clients, because I also do criminal defense. I don't want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put that out there. Personal injury clients. <laughs> Hey man, hey, listen. Hey, thanks for the clarity on that. <laughs> it's all good, man. We all people, man. Right. Don't get those messages in your inbox. Like, wait a minute. It's all good. It's all good. There, some people stumble, you know, in bad situations, man. I ain't, I ain't knocking it. I'm, a, I'm gonna pull a Jeff, man. We, we don't hate on nobody. <laughs> if, <laughs> we don't, we don't hate on nobody. If you got a criminal and you in the Atlanta area, holla. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> we love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. so I want I want to throw this out here, um, and this is something I noticed on a personal note, because uh, you talk about work life balance and being busy and running, running, running. Um, one thing I found that uh, fitness helped me with, uh, you know, before I started working at E2M, of course it works here, but one thing I found is when you are healthier, your production is better. You have you 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 can get a lot more stuff done. You're focused. You're sharp. Uh, do, do you, I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? You know, just just on on a personal note. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so my husband and I we work together. Um, he's my operations manager in the office, and so he sees the day to day, which I so appreciate that because he can see how busy I am. I I, I literally will come in juggling, you know, various cases to phone calls with opposing counsel or insurance adjusters or prosecutors or judges, um, you know, to going over motions and hearings, to preparing clients for court that we have coming up, to managing staff, to, I mean, doing so much. And so having my health intact or, you know, being healthy, it, it definitely speaks volumes to it. I don't think for me, I would be able to do this if I didn't. And I've actually had a lot of colleagues come to me. And actually, a lot of my colleagues, my lawyer friends, have joined E2M because of what they've seen, you know, me go through. And they'll ask me before they've joined, they'll say, How do you do this? And I say, one, one God, first of all, then two, E2M, and then three, the because of the workouts, that's what helps me to keep going. And even if I had a late night, meaning I'm not getting bed till one o'clock in the morning because I have court the next morning, I have a hearing that I have to prepare for, I'm still getting up. My husband knows I'm still getting up at 5.30 to work out at six o'clock. And my my mindset behind that is I'd rather get up to get that adrenaline running and then stay in the bed for an extra hour, which I'm still going to be tired anyway. Yep. An extra hour is not going to help Thanks. my sleep. So why not just get up and at least get some adrenaline running and then at least I can get the energy from it to That's be able facts. to do so. So, yeah, that's what I'm glad you said that. That was really good because that is <laughs> that is that is so true that those extra minutes just make you sleepier. And, you know, you just like more groggy, man. So, all right, B, go ahead, man. Go no, ahead. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, I'm chopping at the bit over here. I know, anyway. I see you, I see you. <laughs> You know, you, you speak to to getting out of bed early and, and, you know, getting after the day. And I'm a firm believer in winning the micro battles, you know, and the first micro battle of the day is is winning that that snooze button, you know, and overcoming the snooze button. And if you can win that first one, it's easier to win the second battle and it's easier to win the third battle and the fourth and the fifth and so on. Uh, but if you lose that first battle, it's just so much easier to kind of fall back on your old routines and your old habits. Right. So if you hit that snooze button. I'm not saying there's not there's a, there's anything wrong with it from time to time. OK, don't don't come knocking on my inbox. Um, <laughs> but if you need that. You need that rest from time to time. That's OK. But, um, you know, for the for the most part. That snooze button, man, that's the first battle of the day. And I just want to touch on what you were saying about, uh, you know, your, your, uh, um, your, your workers noticing a difference, right? I'm a firm believer in if you're winning over here, you're going to start winning over here. And if you're winning over here, you're going to start winning over there and so on and so forth. And you just start to win in so many different areas of life. So uh, a lot of that starts with your mental health your Absolutely. physical health and your, in your physical well being. So, uh, Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for both for being on the podcast, but before thank we, you. before we even, uh, thank get you. close to landing this plane, um, how can I find information about your services? Absolutely. So I am on all social media platforms, um, Google, LinkedIn, 
Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all under Challenger Law Group. Uh, we have our physical offices here in Tucker, Georgia, which is a Atlanta, Metro Atlanta. Um, my phone number, if you want to write it down, is 404-254-1240. Uh, we also have an email, a, a website, challengerlawgroup.com. And, you know, you can come check us out. You know, here's here about you can look at my Google reviews. You can look at all social media platforms. But really, I just want to say that, you know, I am an attorney that really cares about my community. And that's the reason why I opened up my own firm. I've been a lawyer for 15 years, been in private practice now for two and a half, have my own firm for two and a half. And so I really care about my community and I really wanted to help my community. And I really wanted to be that lawyer because sometimes people don't know who to go to. They don't know who to call when they're in trouble. And so my mentor always say is always say that we are crisis managers. We are to manage a crisis when someone calls us and they need our assistance. And even if I'm not the lawyer that can help you with that matter, because everyone's going to need a lawyer at some point in time in your life. <laughs> but it, it, I mean, probate, hopefully not criminal, but I mean, you know, it can be, but you would need some type of lawyer in your, in your life. Um, but even if I'm not a lawyer that can help you, I know a lot of lawyers who are willing to do the same thing. And that's what's great about Atlanta. I'm not from here. Been here now seven years, but I love Atlanta because we are very big on community. So that's how you can reach me. Hey, Amen. Dwayne and I are both big on community. I got to check out your TikTok. And if anybody wants my cell phone number, it's this. You ready? Never mind. I don't want to that <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> Somebody no. got excited for a second there. Wait, 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 yeah, wait give me a they, pen. They right. had a pen. It was ready. They right. were ready. It was ready. I, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all message me and I'll send you my cash app. <laughs> then I'll send you Brad's number. <laughs> but no, no, real talk. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people are watching, listening. Uh, and and you know, one of the many reasons you guys have an amazing story, number one. But another reason why we have you on is because you are, uh, you know, sponsors of the race. You you were like the original. We call we're gonna call y'all the OG sponsors. Me, the OG sponsors, the first ones to to uh, to you know uh, invest, uh, you know, back into the program. You know, and uh, like Jeff says, man, we never, you know, he never asked you for a dime after your your, your three twenty. Um, but I always see in the comments, people say, man, I would pay it over again. Mm -hmm. And then we come up with premium and they don't sign up. But anyway, I'm not on a, I'm not on a soapbox or anything, but I, we just want to thank you, uh, for, you know, being the trailblazer of that. Um, and then letting people see that this is, uh, you know, this is value added. We're, we're, we're taking our time. You're taking your time. You know, we're, we're, we're showing the audience, uh, you know, letting them hear your story. Also, potential clients, because you mentioned you got clients from E2M. So, you know, uh, this podcast, like I said, it, it's, it's, it's worldwide. It's on YouTube, you know. And so we, we want to make sure that the listeners know that if you decide to partner with us, that uh, we will do our best to, you know, add value. Uh, although in their cases, you know, they, you know, that being clients first, uh, you know, we didn't have to do anything because of what they benefited from the program. So. Wanted to put that out there before we transition into our last segment. So our last seg segment is called Do You Know or Did You Know? This is a segment of the podcast where uh, each of you will share something publicly that uh, you may not have shared publicly before or people might not know about you or knew about you. And uh, I got a, sh I'm a short video I'm going to play, give you a chance to think about what that thing is. But it's really, really short. So make sure you're ready. So here's the video. All right, the video's over, so I hope you got your <laughs> do you know or did you know moment. So I'm gonna start with you, Miss Reese. You go first. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you two. Um, they're very nice. short. So one, did you know that I am actually a breast cancer survivor? Mm. So I was. Um, a lot of my friends, of course, knows about it, but I didn't really talk about it much in E2M. But yes, I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 31. Um, cancer does not run in my family. And so I have been cancer free since then in 2011. And uh, yeah, so we've gone on 13 years as a breast cancer survivor. So I'm very much a big uh, proponent of that as well, of cancer and breast cancer and being a supporter of that. So that's one. The second part is we just I just talked about this with my husband the other day when we went out to dinner, is that I used to be part of a bike club. And I actually rode a motorcycle for like what? two months. 
<laughs> Rough Riders. <laughs> Rough Riders. <laughs> Actually, it was Dirty Entertainment. But, okay, uh, all right. <laughs> but he, he's going to laugh at me because it was literally two months. And then uh, <laughs> I had the bike for two months. And then that's when I got diagnosed with breast cancer. And so I sold the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get back on the bike. Hey. No, uh, as a personal injury lawyer, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. I bet. All right, boss man, your turn. Um, my did you know would be um, Teresa said that we, yes, I'm from Atlanta, but uh, did you know that I'm originally from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands? Mm. Is where I was actually born. I was born there in 1978 and I moved to Atlanta in 1980. So that's nice. my did you know. Now, Dwayne, yes. I wonder if we can have a find some sort of connection to get us back to the Virgin Islands. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's all go. Right, right. Exactly. Meet up in the Virgin Islands. I'm down, man. Have a meet you up know? there. I'll go. Yeah. Have a meet up. <laughs> I, I would go too. Awesome. <laughs> That's dope. No, we appreciate you guys. Uh, this has been fun uh, and, and definitely super inspirational. A lot of people in the comments just... Uh, amazed at the story and the strength and uh and and we are as well we know someone would definitely benefit from it um make sure you guys uh if you're in the atlanta area check out uh miss reese's uh law firm and and she gave the connect we're gonna put the connects in the uh, show notes as well so you can have a direct link to all of the socials and all of the things um and brad man anything you want to say as we wrap this up brother I just wanted to say thank you. Um, both of you genuinely care about this world and your community. We need more of that in this world. So thank you so much, guys. All right, y'all. Till next time. Thank you. Thank you.